All right, welcome back. In our last video, we talked about uh, proofs of statements. This video, we'll talk about sequence. So what is a sequence? A sequence is an expression of the form. Here we have it. Gamma entails psi, where psi is the conclusion of the sequence, and gamma is the set of assumptions of the sequence. So what does that mean? That means that this right here, let's see, let me get a pen out. This right here, this gamma is uh, a capital Greek letter, by the way. In capital Greek letter, gamma stands for uh, a set of statements. Now, it's important that, that you know that it's a set of statements because, or a set of assumptions, I should say, of the sequence. Um, but the assumptions are statements, and a set is important because a set can be either an empty set, it can be a set of one statement, or it could be a set of many statements. So gamma might be it might be totally devoid of statements. It might have just one statement, and it might have many statements. Um, and all the whatever that is, the the assumptions. Uh, are what are going to entail this right here. This is one statement, and this statement is the conclusion. So, um, gamma entails sigma. Yeah, I don't think I don't know if the book says so, but um, they're using the uh, the capital letter Greeks capital Greek letters for uh, sets of statements, whereas the lowercase uh, stands for one statement. So yeah, in in our proofs, we're only going to allow. Uh, I should say in our sequence right now. In our sequence, we're only going to allow one statement in the conclusion. Um, although, of course, you can have many statements in the in the assumptions. Uh, and a sequence is correct. We will say it is um, a sequence is correct if and only if there is a proof of psi. Um, this should say and sorry, whose undischarged assumptions are all in the set of uh, gamma. So, in other words, a sequence is a correct sequence if it's got a conclusion. And all the all the assumptions that you need for that conclusion are in front of that that entails sign. That's when you'll say it's a correct sequence. And it's important that you know what that word correct. Um, that well, first of all, that you know that we're using it in a very what's called technical way. And by technical, I mean very precise way that um, is used <clears throat> used for us in logic here. Um, that's important because a lot of times some of these words. Um, can mean a variety of, of things in in everyday language and uh, and you wouldn't know that they actually meant different things because they're so similar meanings like for example well for example this word right here correct right I could use this word correct um, let's say if you ask me uh, what is the best NFL team uh, I could say the Saints and you would say correct in other words you're saying that's a true statement that's the way things are whatever and if I said instead uh, 2 plus 2 equals 4, you could say correct. But there you might mean something like that operation was done the right way. Now, you didn't mean that when you first said that it was correct that the Saints are the best team in the NFL, right? So correct to have a variety of meanings. Here, we're using the word correct of this term, sequent. Right? So it's important later on, when you see this word correct, there should be a bell that goes off that says, hey, I might be seeing this word used in a way that... Um, that is not uh, not the usual way, um, or or it's this specific way that it's being used. Um, yeah, so that's what correct means. A sequent rule. A sequent rule is a property that a sequence ought to have. Now, when we say this, we're talking about ways that you can prove things in general, provability in general, and that's going to be different from what we'll talk, what we'll call natural deduction rules. So we're going to have two kinds of rules. One of them is just about how you prove things in general. One of them is how we come with these specific kinds of proofs called derivations. Derivations are, are you, well, you'll see what they're like when, as we go on in the course. Um, but uh, yeah, you have these proofs called derivations. And when you take the derivations plus the rules for using them, you get to get all together, you get the natural deduction calculus. Um, so when we use these terms uh, throughout this course, that you'll, you'll kind of know what we mean. It still might not be totally clear what I mean by the sequent rule versus the natural deduction rule. I'll give you some examples of that in a second here. But I think really the uh, the meaning of the two will, will come a little bit more clear when you uh, get a little bit further in the course. But let's, let's take our first rule. So first sequent rule. So this sequent rule is, we'll call it the axiom rule. And the axiom is something that you sort of take for granted, whether it's because, you know, uh, we already agree on it or because it's self-evident or, or whatever it is you're taking that for granted in your reasoning now this rule says if this statement sigma is a member of the set of statements gamma 
then the sequence gamma and tail sigma is correct. And this should be somewhat obvious, right? If this statement here is within this set of statements, then you should say that this set of statements entails that one statement that it already has, right? We're saying if these statements are true, then of course one of the statements inside of them is true. So uh, let's take, uh, there's my little, my little notepad at the bottom. Let's take, uh, for example, gamma to be uh, the set of statements uh, zero. Oh man, is a natural number. I, I cannot write well with this thing, so you're gonna have to forgive my writing. Zero is a natural number. That's one statement, and then the next statement we'll say is x equals x for for all natural numbers x x equals x oh man i can't get this thing to write well uh, x equals x and then let's say that um psi is the statement x equals x for all natural numbers x equals x well since psi is a member psi here is a member of the set of statements gamma then of course the set of statements gamma entail psi is true if the state of the if the set of statements gamma is true, then, the set, then that one statement that's inside of the set of ga statements gamma psi, that thing is going to be true too. All right, so that's the first rule, first sequence rule. I'm going to give you one more sequence rule that the book gives you, and then uh, we'll, I'll show you a natural derivation rule. So the next rule is called the transitive rule. And the transitive rule says, uh, it looks a little bit more ugly than the first one. And it says, if the statement, set of statements delta, right, so this is a set of statements right here, that's something to, to, to note, if the set of statements delta entails the singular statement sigma, or sorry, psi, if that is correct, if this sequence is correct, so that's that's the first part of this, right, if this is correct, if this sequence is correct, and there's another part, and if every statement this is a uh, this is kind of I don't like how they do this because this is a lowercase delta and this is an uppercase delta. So this lowercase delta means uh, means a statement that's inside of this set of statements delta. And and so every single one of these kind of, every single one of the statements in this delta right here, right? So uh, psi is one of those uh, psi could be one of those statements or or maybe not, right? Um, but for every one of those statements, if gamma entails all of those statements, the set of statements gamma entails all those statements is correct, if this sequence is correct, then the sequence is always also correct, gamma entails psi. So we've got delta giving you psi, and if gamma gives you all the statements in delta, then gamma also gives you psi. So let's see, we can, I can show you an example. Um, let's say, Delta is the set of statements, let's see, um, uh, x is less than y, and y is less than z. Alright, that's the set of statements. Delta. And then we'll say psi is the statement, um, x is less than z. So now here you can see from these two statements, this this sweet this sequent, oops, this sequent is correct. Delta entails psi. All right. So the first part, uh, looking up here, the first part here is is correct. We got this one. We got delta entails psi is correct. Now we want to see. I'm, I'm going to show you something where every delta, every statement in delta. Is entailed by gamma. So let's say, go back to my, let's do blue instead actually. Do blue. Let's say gamma is a set of statements, and the set of statements in gamma are, um, I don't know, um, x is less than a, and a is less than y. Oops, sorry about that. a is less than y. Right? And then also, um, y is less than uh, b, and b is less than z. 
So those are all my statements. Now, um, these two statements right here are the statements in delta. And these two statements are entailed by all the statements in gamma. Why is that? Because these two statements in gamma entail this one, right? X is less than A and A is less than Y. And then these two statements right here, that's kind of ugly. These two statements entail that statement right there. Y is less than B and B is less than Z. So then Y is less than Z. <clears throat> so those, all the statements in delta are entailed by the statements in gamma. Right, so um, now we, we can't really say, we can't really put our sequence like this. We could not do gamma entails delta and which entails sigma. We couldn't do that because we're not putting, um, we're not putting sets of statements behind the, the, behind this guy right here. We're not putting sets of statements behind the, um, behind the entail side. So we can't really do that, but what this property is going to do, it's going to show us that something like that. All of gamma entails all of gamma entails all the statements in delta. So that it and delta entails sigma or psi, excuse me, I, I, entails psi. So uh, did gamma entails psi. So let me see here. I just want an eraser here. So here's what we'll do instead. Instead, what we got is. For all the statements gamma, uh, for all the statements in gamma, entail every statement, lowercase delta, that is a member of the set of statements delta. And we could do this, uh, you may not have seen this yet, but for all, that means for all statements in, in delta, all statements delta in, in the, the set of statements delta. Um, so it entails all of those statements and Delta itself entails psi, so gamma entails psi. This right here is kind of convoluted. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you may, you may not want to look look at that. Uh, really, what we're just showing you is this over here. It's just this guy right here. Let me clear all this stuff off of. I want to erase all the stuff on the side. Really, what we're showing you, well, what I'm showing you is you have this. You have delta, uh, delta entailing psi, right? That's what we had right up here. Delta in entailed psi, right? These two statements entail that statement. And then you have this. All the statements in delta are entailed by gamma. So gamma, these two statements right here entail this one. These two statements right there entail that one. So all the statements in gamma entail all the statements in delta. So if gamma entails, entails all the statements in delta, Delta entails psi, then gamma entails psi is correct too. That is the transitive rule. It's kind of an ugly way of, of presenting it, so I apologize about that. I'm get a little bit better as the, the course goes along here. Um, let's talk about a natural deduction rule. Now we've already done an axiom rule for sequent uh, for sequent rules. Here's the difference then: the natural deduction rule is is going to give us a specific kind of of um, of way of proving it and. and Unfortunately, it's not going to look, it's really not going to come out in these examples. These are the examples the book gave in this first part of the chapter, but you're not going to get to see exactly what a derivation looks like because this is not usually what a derivation looks like. But here, let phi be a statement, then this, just writing phi in the middle right here, you know, like that, that is also a derivation. Uh, now, its conclusion is phi, and it has one undischarged assumption, phi. Uh, this is, remember, an axiom is just something that you're assuming to be true. So you're just laying it out there. Here, here's my uh, conclusion, phi. Uh, what are my assumptions that, that I get to phi? Just phi itself. I'm just laying down phi, right? Um, that was the same as this rule right here, the sequent rule uh, for axiom rules. If psi is in, in gamma, then gamma tells psi is correct. Remember, we're just saying it, if <clears throat> psi is over here, if it's in this set, then of course it's 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 entailed by itself. That's what you're saying here. Uh, phi entails itself. It's a proof of itself, but it doesn't prove itself like as in like I just showed you the proof. It's more like we're just we're assuming it, and then therefore we can we can conclude it since we've assumed it. Of course, should you assume it or not? That's a different question. 
Anyway, so those that's the beginning of the, the uh, sequent and natural deduction rules. I'll give you, uh, we'll go through the uh, work in the next one, the, the example problems that they give in the book in the next video.